Okay, so welcome to this next section. We will explore the Simulation Studio. So once you've launched the Transis 18 window, we'll start a new project. And for this first lecture, I'm just going to show you around an existing example, which is the solar hot water system. So this is a pre-made example, which gives us a good idea of how Transis can be used to model, in this case, a domestic solar hot water system. So what do we see here? Well, each of these blocks are different components, and you can see they're all linked together. So as we said before, this will create a full system. Here we have a collector, a tank, the controller, and the pump. So these are the main physical components of our actual system. Most of the others are just uh, outputs and plotting and data input, for example, the, the weather this is a data input. So when we double click on one of these components, we can see a few different tabs here. We can see the parameter tab. So these are all of the fixed parameters for the solar collector. So here we have number and series, collector area, fluid specific heat, efficiency mode, and when we don't understand one of these, we can just click on the More button to find out more. So for Efficiency Mode, we click More. This tells us the different efficiency modes that are available. And there's more information in the Transist documentation. So this is talking about how the efficiency equation is derived. And then in the input section, we can see the nine different inputs for the collector and the temperature and that flow rate and so on. We can also see what are the default units that are used. So the default standard units in transis are kilograms, hours, and kilojoules, and also meters. So these are the, uh, the base units. So instead of kilowatts and watts or liters for example we're using kilojoules per hour so for energy rates so that's really important to remember these can be changed in the parameters for different imperial units and then it will just convert the unit here but for outputs these are these are fixed, so it's important to note what units are used for every input and output. Other things to look at are the connections between different components. So here, the connection between the collector and the tank has a link. And when we double click on this link, we can see what information is flowing between the collector and the tank. So in this case, we have the outlet temperature and the outlet flow rate going to the hot side temperature and the hot side flow rate of the tank. Another important thing to notice is the different colors of font used. So when an input is colored in black, that means it's been used to deliver to another component. When it's in blue color, that means this, this output is not used. Similarly, for an input on this side, we can see here the environment temperature does not have an input from any other component. That means that the initial value of 20, this is the a constant value that will be used for the entire simulation. But that's okay in this case. A constant value of 20 for the environment temperature is reasonable. We can also see where are all these different components found within the component libraries. So here we have a lot of different libraries containing the different components. For this collector, if you click on the information, you find out it's a solar collector, quadratic efficiency with second order incidence angle modifiers. Don't worry too much about that. But you can find this collector here under quadratic efficiency collector. 
second order incidence angle modifiers. In the next lecture I'll show you, we'll run the first simulation and have a look at the results.